So my name is Zeke Leonard, as you know, professor at Syracuse University, and we're making this little video because I couldn't find a video online about how to apply a penetrating oil finish that I liked. So before I use any dangerous chemicals here in the spray booth, I'm gonna turn on the spray booth fans. That switch is right here. So we're gonna talk about applying finish. There are two basic genre of finish that are available for wooden furniture. And I think of those as surface or film finish and penetrating finish. Surface and film finish is stuff like paint, varnish, shellac, anything that you apply to the surface, it then dries and stays pretty much on the surface. Penetrating finishes are finishes that actually get down inside the grain of the wood and harden there. Now, there obviously can be some crossover between the two, uh, but in this case, we're going to use penetrating finishes in the sense of, uh, in the form of penetrating oils, or what's called an oil finish. I have a couple of examples here, um, re both relatively cheap, both available at most hardware stores. So this is a, this is called Danish oil. This is a product made by the Watco company. Uh, Danish oil is a mixture of some linseed oil, some thinner, uh, and some Japan dryer. It's a really hard finish to mess up. It's pretty cheap and it's pretty easy to apply. What we're going to use though is we're going to use this stuff. This is Formby's tongue oil finish. Now I actually prefer to use straight tongue oil when I can. Tongue oil is oil from the tongue nut in the same way that walnut oil is from a walnut. Uh, there's a nut called the tongue nut, and that's processed into oil. And what I love about using straight tongue oil is it's totally, it's VOC free, it's totally safe. Uh, you can use it on stuff that people are gonna handle and be involved in on a regular basis. Now, what Formby's is, and this is a version of tongue oil that you can get in a hardware store, you can get at Lowe's. Uh, Formby's tongue oil is tongue oil plus some other stuff. There's a th some thinners in there and a couple of other things. We're using this in part because it's easier to get your hands on locally than uh, straight tongue oil, and also because it dries more easily and it's a little more forgiving to apply. So we're gonna use uh, Formby's tongue oil. We've got some in the, uh, here in the spray booth in the flammables cabinet. It says 4DES341 on it. Feel free to use as much of this as you need. I've got my maple. Here, this is a piece of the maple that you're all using for your projects. I've got it sanded to 220, but not farther. I've made sure that I've sanded it down so that all tool marks are gone, and a good way to do that is to hold it oblique to the light, and you can usually see if there are any tool marks in there. This looks pretty good. I've got it nice and smooth. For this particular sample piece, I've left it on, I've left this end with some planar marks on, and then I've got it sanded, and I'm going to apply the finish in a gradation so that you get a sense of what it looks like raw and what it'll look like finished. Right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to shake up my tongue oil. Um, the tongue oil is mostly non -to the tongue oil is non-toxic, but the stuff that's added to the tongue oil is a little bit toxic. So for that reason, I'm going to make sure that my fans are on when I'm in the spray booth. I'm going to open this up. And I'm going to wear gloves when I apply this. Uh, it, this isn't super terrible stuff for you, but it's not great for you. And so you really want to make sure that you're not absorbing any of these chemicals through your skin. We also want to have proper ventilation because the solvents that are in here do contain VOCs, volatile organic compounds, and those, those have all kinds of deleterious health effects. So we want to make sure that the fan is on when we're working, or if you're going to be working at home or something that you're doing it outside. Um, also bear in mind that this stuff is flammable. You don't want to be doing it in the kitchen while, you, while you're cooking dinner or something like that. So what I'm going to do is I've got a rag, just regular old cotton rag. Um, T-shirts work. I use old underwear a lot. Uh, you don't want anything too stiff. You don't want to use like old jeans, but old T-shirts are really good. Uh, if you don't have any kicking around that you can cut up, you can always go to Salvation Army and get a couple for a couple of bucks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually fl flood this with tongue oil, and I'm just going to wipe it on. And I really want to flood this, especially in the first coat. In the first coat, 
you want to get it really, really wet, and you'll find that this wood is super thirsty in the first coat. It's going to really absorb a lot of this stuff. What you'll notice, and it'll be hard to see in the video, but what I can see, and maybe you can see it if I do this, is that there are places that it's really wet and places that it's really dry. And that's because this is the first coat. And so that, that moisture is being absorbed uh, in some places and not in other places. What you want to do is you want to apply until it's wet right the way across. So I'm just going to keep flooding this until it's wet right the way across because this is really our chance to get this finish to absorb right the way down into all of those fibers. The reason we want to get the finish down into the fibers is that it'll get down in there and it'll harden. And so that'll, that'll make the finish go deeper into the wood. It'll wear off less and it'll protect the wood more. So I'm still seeing that in some places I am, I, it's being absorbed more quickly. So I'm going to keep applying. Just keep flooding it right the way across. And now one of the reasons that I like to do this outside of the actual spray booths is that if I stand off to one side, the light from the spray booths will glance down across my workpiece and I can see how we're doing in terms of absorption. So I can get low. Those of you that have gone to the Stickley factory and seen the finishing rooms, you'll see, you will have noticed perhaps that there are low lights that run a glancing light across the workpiece. This is good. So I'm getting to the place now that the liquid is actually standing on the surface of the workpiece. So there we go. So it's, it's staying wet right the way across. And what that tells me is that just about all of the finish has been absorbed that's going to be absorbed. Right? Just a couple of, couple of dry spots. I'm going to give it just a little bit more. Now, what I'm going to do at this point is I'm going to let it sit for a few minutes so that that can really start to set. And then I'm going to come back in about five or ten minutes and I'm going to wipe off any excess that there is. Okay, so I've let this sit. By and large, it has gotten dry. It's, there's still some uh, moisture apparent on top. I'm going to take a new rag, a clean rag, and I'm just going to wipe, wipe off any excess. And you can see that I picked some up, but not a lot, because most of it is soaked in and most of it's dry. Now. If you weren't wearing gloves, you could feel that the moisture has, to a certain extent, done something that we call raising the grain. That is, even though this isn't water, uh, the, it has done what water does to wood and made the fibers swell a little bit, and so the, it'll feel a little fuzzy, kind of. So what I like to do between, so what I do between coats is I take a piece of, I like to get a piece of 220 sandpaper that has been used um, so it's actually a little softer than 220, and I like to rub it down, rub this out with that. Now, uh, people use all kinds of things. You can use steel wool, you can use Scotch-Brite, uh, which is that green kind of cleaning product that is on some sponges, right? If you're going to use something like Scotch-Brite and you're going to get it at the grocery store, make sure it doesn't have soap in it, because some of them have soap in it. Um, you'll remember that I have my my method for folding a quarter sheet to make a little pad uh, for, my, for my sanding pad. And what I'm going to do, whether I'm using steel wool or scotch brite or sandpaper, is I'm just going to very lightly scuff the surface until it's smooth. I'm really not leaning into this. I'm really just knocking the tooth off. And that's all I want to do. You don't want to lean into it because you don't want to sand back past the finish that you've already applied, right? So. I'm just going to take this and barely touching it all, just barely, barely touching. I'm going to move it across the workpiece like that. 
And now I've got a nice smooth workpiece. I can wipe off any extra dust. And now I'm ready to apply my second coat. Now the directions on the can are going to tell you different stuff. Um, I usually feel pretty good about applying a second coat within, the, within an hour or so after letting the first coat dry. After that, you want to give it longer and longer to dry because the second coat isn't going to soak in as much. So you want to let it dry on top of the first coat. So I'm going to take my, my good old trusty rag. I'm going to flood it. And I'm going to wipe finish on. I hope I forgot to leave that part. No, that's OK. I'm going to wipe finish on. And now it's not soaking in at all. So now my workpiece is glossy, is wet, right the way across, because it doesn't have anywhere to soak into. right? So I'm going to let that sit for about 10 minutes. And I'm going to come back and wipe off the excess. OK, so I've let that dry for about 10 minutes. I'm going to come back with my dry rag. I'm going to wipe this down. There we go. And I really want to wipe all the excess off so that it's a similar sheen right the way across. So now I really want to let it sit and dry for a while, probably four hours, maybe more if you've got the time, although these are due on Friday, so you probably don't, but at least four hours. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to scuff it again and I'm going to do another coat. I usually like to hit it with about four coats. So if you think about it, those four coats are going to take the last, the, from coat two to coat three and coat three to coat four, you kind of want to let it sit for four or five hours between each coat. Uh, so that's going to be a good solid day, right? Um, so I'll scuff it out between each, between each coat and then I'll lay another coat of oil on and then I'll let that dry for about 10 or 15 minutes, and then I'll wipe off the excess. When I'm all done, there's some really important safety stuff that we've got to pay attention to. The first, of course, is close the, close the jar. And the second has to do with this. So the thing about volatile organic compounds is that when they're drying, they actually, there is a certain exothermic reaction that happens. What that means is it gives off heat. And so if you crumple up an oily rag and leave it sit in an enclosed environment like a trash can, it can actually spontaneously combust. As it dries, it can give off enough heat that it catches itself on fire. This is especially a bad idea in a place where the trash cans are full of things like other rags, sawdust, other highly flammable stuff. The rule in my shop is when I'm done using an oily rag, I lay it out like this overnight or as long as I need to for it to get dry. Once it's dry, it's fine. Uh, but, I, but we can't crumple these up and throw them in the trash can. I'm going to suggest that as early as is practicable, you move your workpiece. Uh, once it's dry, you move it out of the spray booth because the spray booth is used by 400 students and not all of them will be conscientious about your finished work. So once you're done, once your finish is dry, I suggest instead of leaving it here that you take it back to your desk or to your house. If you're going to leave it in here, there's a shelf up here that's out of the reach of most people, and that tends to be a safe place to leave it. All right, I think that's it. That's all you need to know about how to apply finish. I'll see you on Friday, and we'll look at some stools.